I'm from what you would consider the future. Just a quick note from the future, and that's the future of the version of me that made this video that you're about to watch last week. You're not about to watch it last week, you're about to watch it now. So this is from your past, but from my present and the future of the person that made the video. That's me that made the video last week because Waldorf have already implemented some of the changes that I recommend later on in this video. I'll try and edit those sections out, but it might not make sense. So I might just leave them in, which is why I'm making this now. They've already put in a band pass, a high pass and a low pass digital filter. So you've got two filters in this now and they're considering putting in the XT digital filters, the whole range of filters in the XT you're about to see. And they're looking at maybe implementing them in this as well. So that's already happened but it hadn't happened when I made this video so let's go back to the past as I said this is some kind of the temporal, temporal nexus, nexus. Yes, how does the new microwave M stack up against an original microwave XT well we're about to find out functionally they're very very similar but we have gained a few things and we have lost a few things we've gained analog filters independent wavetables per oscillator an additional global LFO, an 8-bit mode, and a USB port. We've also got four stereo outputs plus the main output. That's an additional three stereo outputs compared to the XT. And what have we lost? Well, the XT is eight-part multi-timbral compared to four, and it's got an additional two voices. The XT's got 10 voices, and the M has got eight. And the XT's also got an audio input. It's got FM, basic effects, a mob matrix, and it's got modifiers for the mob matrix that do basic mathematical functions just to make things really complicated. But they're the more obvious differences. There are some subtle differences once you start to play them. But should we take a look at the front panel now? And these do look pretty similar, actually. We've got the two oscillators, one, two, one, two. We've got the filter, the filter. We've got the envelopes, the envelopes here. And these are particularly similar and pretty unique to the microwaves. Then we've got the two LFOs with just the, the speed and the shape, speed and the shape, two LFOs, two LFOs. And we've got glide on both. We've got these knobs here. and activate them with these buttons here and then we've got the mixer on both as well and the mixer's got two oscillators noise and a ring mod we've got two oscillators noise and a ring mod so we can see they're of the same heritage can't we we've got the four access knobs here for changing parameters we've got the four access knobs on this so very very similar from that perspective it's much much easier though i have to say to edit the m than it is the XT, I think we've learned a lot in the past sort of, is it 20 or 30 years, however long ago it was. Although it's a small screen here, it's like a, is like something from the 1990s. It's actually pretty decent. You get to see everything you need to see really simply. And you go through each of the menus using these buttons here. Whereas on the XT, it's a little bit more of a faff. We've got these four buttons here. And then we scroll through each of the functions. So you can see oscillator one, oscillator two, wave one, wave two. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but we can flick through all the different pages with this. It's just much, much easier with these sort of fast access buttons. So both similar instruments with subtle differences, but they're all the things you can read in the manual. What you can't do in the manual is listen to it. So let's have a listen to the sounds now, shall we? And we'll start off as usual with the oscillators. And you can hear straight away that they sound pretty similar, don't they? Let's knock them down a couple of octaves. They're not identical, but they are using the same wavetables. We've got the same names on them. If we go through these here, resonant, resonant 2, LP, mallet, synth, square sweep, bell, pulse sweep. They're all familiar to me after having the XT for years. And at the end of each of the wavetables, we've got a pulse uh, or a square, a triangle, and a sawtooth. Just demonstrate that. So wave 61 is a triangle. Wave 62 is a square, and wave 63 is a saw. And over on this, wave 61 is a triangle, wave 62 is a square. And the reason we've got those simple analog waves at the end of each wavetable is because on the XT and the original microwave, you've only got one wavetable between the two voices. So that allowed you to have a mix of a sawtooth and whatever's in the wavetable or a square and whatever's in the wavetable. Just make things a little bit more flexible when you've only got one wavetable at a time. <laughs> So 
So from the off, we can tell they're definitely of the same family and that the M is much closer to the XT than it was to the Iridium. You can hear that stepping through those waves. Let's stop there, that's wave 54, and do the same on the M. They don't sound identical, but much closer than the M did to the Iridium, and this has got a 16-bit and 8-bit mode as well. The 8-bit mode is much buzzier on the low end. You can see those little spikes coming in over 8 kilohertz. The XT is 16-bit, so it should be similar to the 16-bit mode on that, so we'll keep them on them. And it is. Let's try some higher frequencies. More differences there. Again, quite similar, and in the XT we've got this quality parameter, and what that does, it changes the amount of aliasing, so if you listen to this... It gets much, much cleaner, and that's the way I used to play it. So when I got the M, and I was playing with the M, I thought, God, it's really gnarly and growly, it's got all these weird digital artifacts, I don't really like it. But it didn't sound too familiar to the XT, and that's because on the XT it's got, I think it describes it in the manual as magic mathematics to stop it aliasing. But you can change that and bring the aliasing back in. It's a little bit much on five. This is on four. So the M is actually the XT with the aliasing on level four. So similar. Ooh, like that. Whether you're within a track or not. Yeah, it's got some grime in there. Let's turn it up to five. So between four and five. But interesting that the Iridium had a legacy mode on it as well, and it had the dirty mode, and what was the other one called? Oh, harsh. So um, they obviously really like the digital aliasing, and people do like it as a feature, because on the XT, they could have just left that out, couldn't they? And had it nice and clean. Let's listen to that a couple of octaves lower. Doesn't make any difference down there, but we've also got this timing quantization. And then we get a little bit of buzz out of that as well. Again, five levels. Let's try on the M. You can hardly hear it at all on one. So they've got the time quantize on two and the alias on four, and it's very, very close, isn't it? The initial patch on the M is mono, so I go to shift and mode and turn it into poly. Let's chuck it up an octave or two. To all intents and purposes, they're really, well, the same, aren't they? <laughs> or really, really close, at least. And when I was listening last night, I had it turned up really loud, and I was hearing really minor differences, but those sort of differences that you're only gonna hear in lab situations or when you're playing, uh, doing something like this. So that's the basic sonic characteristics of the oscillators done. Should we just take a look at some of the main differences then? 
Obviously the microwave has got different wavetables per oscillator, so that's a huge difference. You can see there we've got different names on each of them, uh, just to prove it actually does it. But uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But what that means is that I found it really difficult. I thought I'll, I'll match a few patches, but on the M, there's so many patches that use the different, the different wavetable types that I just thought was not, not a lot of point in that really. It takes an awful lot of time to do it, especially because of the modulation. How the modulation works and trying to figure one out and trying to translate it to the other was just a bit of a nightmare. So <laughs> uh, the next big difference is the overdrive circuit. And you can see that distortion on the sine wave there, can't you? In fact, if we go into the mix settings, we can see there's an overdrive level there. So we're getting no overdrive when they're both below the line. And as soon as we go above that line. We're getting that overdrive into the filter. We do have overdrive circuits on the XT. Two different types, saturate or overflow. So this is sort of saturating. Let's see what it does. It does a similar sort of thing, doesn't it? Not far off, although this is the more natural one, I think. This is a more analog overdriven circuit, whereas this is digitally controlled or it's a digital saturation. And also we've got this other one you might have seen in my other videos called the A6 mode. The A6 mode is where there's an overflow error and it just sends back some crazy numbers effectively. But you've got to be in 8-bit mode for that. And when the two values reach over 128, you get that. So all sorts of nice madness you can get in there. The XT also has an overflow mode. So we'll take it off saturate and go to overflow. Yeah, there we go. The overflow on the XT as well. I didn't realize it had this. Or if I did, maybe I thought it was broken at the time. And then when I get below a certain level, it disappears. I'm much closer than I thought, and that was one of the things that really attracted me to the end. Didn't realise I already had it on my XT. It's quite cool. Anyway, what else have we got? We've got FM on the XT, and we don't have FM on the M. Let's just have a listen. And I can't replicate that on the M because it doesn't have FM, but it does have ring mod. Should we take a listen to that? Set up the same, let's try the ring mod. You'd think they were the same synth, really. So ring mod's the same, FM's different, the fact that you've got two different wavetables is definitely different. We've got sync on them both as well, not gonna, not gonna go through that as well, as the ring mod's been so similar. So what else is there to look at? Obviously, the filters. Lovely, smooth, ladder filter, 24 dB. Not bad, it's digital. It's much easier to do a nice sweep on the M because it's a, a pot, not an encoder. So you've got a start and a stop point. Whereas on the encoder, you're never sure where you're gonna end up because it seems to depend on the speed. If I do it fast, I can do it in one cycle, so in 360 degrees, but if I do it slowly... It 
takes over two cycles. Anyway, let's listen to it with a little bit of resonance. And watch your ears here. Off that goes, way over 20 kilohertz. Putting the XT on full resonance, and again, watch your ears. It starts off at about 19 kilohertz. Comes in really spiky though, doesn't it? I'll just knock it down a little bit. And it dies off there. And that's the digitalness of it, I suppose. So they don't want aliasing, they don't want it going over the Nyquist frequency. So it's really steppy, that. Sounds rough, doesn't it? In a sort of quite a nice way, I suppose. And then down to those sub bass booms. So it's not bad, it's a digital filter, and it doesn't go as high as the, as the M does. Just like the Iridium doesn't. But it goes well screechy enough, really, for most purposes, doesn't it? You'll notice we're not losing any bass there, either. No loss of level when you bring in the resonance. Whereas on the ladder filter... So I really like the filter on the M, it just sort of really shines to me, it's got a really nice quality to it, but then it's just the one, it's the 124 dB low pass filter, whereas on the XT we've got all sorts there, we've got low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, we've got some wave shapers, we've got FM as well, and these just add some real character and dirt that you can't get from a single filter. <laughs> That's the sine wave shaper. That's the wave shaper. I don't know if it's based on the actual wave you're using. I think it is. A dual low pass band pass. FM filter. Sample and hold. And a 12 dB high pass. Notch and band stop. So we've got a nice notch there, we're quite like. And we've got a separate high pass on this as well. So much, much, much more flexible from that perspective and much dirtier. They can do some really vile, disgusting things in a really nice way. And it's the real character for me of the XT. You just can't get that on the M. The M has definitely got its own character. The XT has got two LFOs there over here. Uh, and they're identical and they can both clock to MIDI. On the M, we've got two LFOs on the front panel, plus we've got an additional third global LFO, and the global LFO is the only one that will sync to, to MIDI, but uh, LFO2 and LFO1 interact in different ways with each other. They do similar things on the XT, but they're not identical. As I say, M's got three, XT's got two. And then we look at the envelopes, and the envelopes look identical almost from the front panel. But on the M, the wave envelope doesn't loop and repeat. It does on the XT. But on the M, the free envelope loops in repeat, whereas on the XT, it doesn't loop at all. So slight differences, um, as I say, a little bit more subtle. So that does bring me to the end. What are my final thoughts? I absolutely love the M. It's just got bags and bags of character. And I was really toying with selling the XT uh, and buying the M. I don't think it's worth having both of them, it just isn't. I really like the fact that you've got the two different um, different oscillators with two wavetables, for example, stuff like that, and the sound of that filter is absolutely lovely, but 
This has just reminded me how disgusting the <laughs> XT can be. It's really complex to program though. I've got a couple of editors for it and they just open it up so much. I didn't get much use out of that until I actually got those editors because it's such a pain in the backside going through this sort of matrix here. And it's such a complex synth to be trying to dig in with that, even though it's got these 40 knobs and everyone loves it. It's got the 40 knobs. When you come to actually do anything useful, it's really, really difficult to do. Whereas on the M, it's just super simple, really easy interface. So the M definitely wins for that. The M wins for a classy sound. The XT wins for dirty sounds. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. You know, if you're thinking of the M or you're looking at the XT, at least now you know the difference sonically and if it was of use please um, subscribe share ring the bell and maybe join me on my patreon page where i've got lots of bits and bobs as well so i will see you soon